I feel somewhat panicky about the fact that there are only two more confirmation sessions before summer. I feel like there is so much more to teach these young people that I haven't taught them. Though I think I could teach them the same thing two years in a row when some of them would still look at me like, what? It makes me feel like I'm in good company since Jesus spent three years with his disciples. Just dawned on me, maybe that's why confirmation used to be three years, right? Now we do it do two years. But he spends three years with them and they still don't really get it. But the things he told them that would happen, that he would suffer, crucify, be crucified, die, be buried and raised, happened. And then he spends another 40 days with them. Again, teaching what he has already taught, but now they should know the truth of his claims since they happened, but of course, they still haven't gotten it. At the end of the 40 days, they ask him, so Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to the people of Israel? They still haven't gotten it. It's like raising kids. It seems like you have all this time to impart your wisdom or to make amends for your non-wisdom moments, and then your kid is off to college or to a job across the country into their own life, and you hope and pray you have instilled in them all the values you want them to have and that they will live those out in the midst of everything pulling at them in different directions. But it never feels like enough enough time, enough imparting. I remember when Pears spurted up in height and before I moved out here, I went around the kitchen counter and I took him by his arms and I just shook him and I said, stop it, you stop it right now, you stop growing up. I haven't even taught you about sex yet. <laughs> but that's only because I did that with Kai and I said, Eric, you know, it's your job to teach Pear about that. What I love about this ascension story, told in Luke and in Acts, both written by the same author, is that Jesus comes to the end of his teaching. He opens their minds to understand the scriptures. He encapsulates the message one more time that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. He gives them the final instructions to stay, to wait, to be clothed with power. And then I'm sending you to be my witnesses. And then he's gone. But not before he blesses them. It is his last act before he has taken up into God. He blesses them. It is the power of blessing throughout scripture that is a theme. Blessed to be a blessing, Abraham and Sarah are. The blessing that flows from God through us to bless other people. It's nothing that we hold on to. It's something that we share. Today we celebrate another year of Sunday School of Faith Formation for our younger community members, of fulfilling our mission of growing in faith. This only happens because of the teachers and helpers who have been blessed by God and in turn share that blessing with the younger ones. They are blessed to be a blessing. Laura Stahl, who has held everything together this year, when uh, we knew we were going to have this year, I'm going off script here, we knew we were going to have this year, um, without the candidate that we've been waiting for to be associate pastor, and she just said, I'm not going to abandon you. I, and she just took this, took this on and led our children's ministry this year. And she really doesn't want any credit, so I didn't ask her if I could put this in here because she would have said no. But just being around her, one knows that she has been blessed to be a blessing because we experience that blessing through the Spirit's work in and through her. And then when I thank her for being the blessing she is, she responds with, well, it brings me joy. 
and how she has been blessed by serving. And that's how it works. We hear that in the gospel today. Jesus blesses his disciples as he leaves them, and they are filled with great joy, and then they go into the temple, and they are blessing God. Those who take communion to our homebound members say this every time we meet. They said it on Thursday. They take communion, and they walk away knowing that they have been blessed, filled with joy. Today we welcome to the Lord's table our young people who gathered for three sessions to hear about the Lord's Supper, to hear that there is a place for them and for every being at this table. For eight of the ten, this is their first communion, and we rejoice with them. One of the things I appreciate about the material that we use is the final session reminds us that we are fed at this table so that we can be sent to feed. Fed so that we can go and feed others. Here's what their booklet says. After the meal, Jesus will go with you. Jesus will help you to love all people, even when it is hard. Your church family will also help you by praying for you, loving you, and forgiving you. Jesus, that spirit of power from on high, and your church family will help you to forgive others, even mean kids and crabby people. To say no to things that will hurt people, earth, air, water, plants, and animals, and say yes to things that will help them. To be kind to people who are different and those who are laughed at and left out. To tell others about God's love. To share food, clothes, and money with those who are poor and hungry, even if it means fewer toys, clothes, and things for yourself. To share your things with others. To bring joy to sick, sad, and lonely people. Do you hear it? Blessed to be a blessing, which sends us back into blessing God. What a great circle of life to be caught up in, blessing upon blessing upon blessing. We have a lot of blessings during the year where we gather around the font. Last year it was for, last Sunday it was for uh, fishing season. Next week it will be for blessing the trails. We do those blessings to remind ourselves that we are sent into the world to be blessings. Whether we are fishing or hiking or riding our bikes or graduating or skiing, the Spirit has clothed us with power to be blessing to all people and all creation. I love what John O'Donohue writes in his book, To Bless the Space Between Us. Anybody know this book? to bless the space between us. In the parched deserts of postmodernity, a blessing can be like the discovery of a fresh well. It would be lovely if we could rediscover our power to bless one another. As a society right now, we seem to be more skilled at what? Cursing one another. Donahue continues, when a blessing is invoked, it changes the atmosphere. Some of the plenitude flows into our hearts from the invisible neighborhood of loving kindness. In light and reverence of blessing, a person or situation becomes illuminated in a completely new way. A dead, in a dead wall, a new window opens. In dense darkness, a path starts to glimmer, and into a broken heart, healing falls like morning dew. It is ironic that we so often to continue to live like paupers, though our inheritance of spirit is so vast. We are, remember, clothed with power. He continues, whenever you give a blessing, a blessing will return to enfold you. We end 
every one of our worship services with what is known as the, the Aaronic Blessing, named after Moses' brother Aaron, who was a priest. God tells Moses to tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In so doing, God says, they will place my name on the people and I will confirm it by blessing them. If you are a regular attender or listener, you know that I rarely say anything else for a blessing at the end of the service. Partly because I, I don't know how we improve on this ancient word. But also because I know it's not just words, but truth. That we are blessed to be a blessing. So it's not something that I'm reading, but I feel that it's something that God imparts through me. Blessed to be a blessing, to be sent to be a blessing. Like Jesus departing from his disciples. Like Sunday school teachers departing for the summer from the children. Like pastors departing from their confirmands. Like parents watching their children graduate and move on or away like children watching their parents grow old and pass away. Time for teaching, learning, imparting wisdom, gone. But there is the gift of blessing that God gave to Moses to give to Aaron to give to the people that Jesus, as he departed this earth, gave to his disciples. It sounds just like words, but it carries with it the power and the presence of God. And it requires nothing of us other than to receive it. Receive God's blessing upon yourselves this day. In Jesus' name, amen.